In this video, I want to show you how I created this cartoon animated flame in Blender. I'm currently working on a 2D animation in Toon Boom Harmony of a character walking through a sewer system. And I wanted the character to be carrying a torch, and I wanted the torch to be moving realistically in a cartoonish sort of way, but I didn't want to hand animate all of those movements. So I wanted to see what I could create in Blender, and this is what I came up with. So I'm going to show you the steps I went through that will hopefully help you on your future projects. So I've got Blender open, and this is 3.2.0. I don't have any add-ons or any customizations, so if you're looking at a basic install of Blender, we should be seeing the same thing. The first thing I want to do is click in the viewport, and we'll be using Eevee for the render engine for this. Eevee should be the default, I believe, but we can check that by clicking on Render Properties, Render Engine, Eevee. If you have something else, just click in there and change it to Eevee. With the cube selected, hold shift and click the camera and click the light and hit delete. So I hit one on my numpad to come into front orthographic view. If I want to move around, I can hold shift and middle mouse button and drag. Click shift A to bring up my add menu. And I'm going to select metaball ball. So I'll go to the outliner, double click in M ball and change the name to fire. Now with that metaball selected, I want to hit shift D to create a duplicate, and then Z to constrain it to the Z axis and pull up just a little bit. With that metaball selected, I want to hit S and shrink it down to about right there. We don't have to be exact. Now you'll notice that I changed the name first and then duplicated the object. That way it carried the same name to the duplicate. So one note I want to make is metaballs do have a naming convention you have to follow. So you can see my original metaball is named Fire, and my second metaball is named Fire.001. If I double click in Fire and change it back to M Ball, you can see the metaballs are no longer reacting to each other. And if I change that back to Fire, you can see they now are. So that's something to keep in mind in case you run into that issue. Another thing I want to bring up is a metaball's area of influence. So with the main metaball selected, you can see in the viewport I have a yellow circle around that metaball, and that's the area of influence. When two metaballs' area of influences overlap, that is when they start to interact with each other. So if I click fire point zero zero one and hit G to move it up and Z to constrain it to the Z axis, you can see as those areas of influence move apart, they no longer interact. And there'll be a setting we'll change later that'll make the interaction stronger so you can see how that's controlled. So now I'm going to hide these two meta balls so I can create my emitter. To do that, I'm going to go to my outliner and turn off the eyeball icons next to both meta balls. Now I'm going to hit Shift A to bring up my add menu. I'm going to select Mesh and then UV Sphere. So with that selected, I'm going to hit Tab to go into edit mode. Then you'll notice if I left click and drag to select the bottom vertices and I scroll around, they only selected the front vertices. To select the vertices at the back of the sphere, I'm going to hit Alt Z to go into X-ray mode. So now I can see through the UV sphere. And if I left click and drag again and scroll around, you can see I've selected all of those. So with those selected, I want to click delete and from the pop-up menu select vertices. Then I'll hit Alt-Z to come out of X-Ray mode, and Tab to come out of Edit mode. So I'm going to open my Transform menu by clicking in, and you'll see that pop up on your right side of the viewport. And under Dimensions, I want to change the Z to 0 to flatten this. Now if I turn on Wireframe mode, you can see what that looks like. Now I'm going to click one of my numpad to go back to Front Orthographic, and this will be our emitter. So I'm going to double click in the outliner to change the name to emitter. So I'm going to go to the outliner and unhide the two meta balls. And with emitter selected, I'm going to go to the properties menu and see we have a particles property tab. Click on that. We don't currently have a particle system, so I'm going to click plus to create one. The first thing I want to do is go to the render tab, open that. And for render as, I'm going to change that from halo to object. Then under Object and Instance Object, I'm going to click in there and choose Fire.001. So now it'll be emitting our Metaball Fire.001. So I'm going to hit Play by hitting my spacebar. 
and we can see something moving around, but we can't see a lot of detail. So I'm going to spacebar again to pause that. So I know from experience, our problem is that the size of the particles being emitted are too small. Let me just say up front that this tutorial will be fairly short, but it took me several hours to figure out how all this would work. So even though I'm plugging in the right numbers, it did take me a while to figure that out. So that is something that if you're using this process for your own project, that you should consider that and not get discouraged. So under scale, I'm going to change it from 0 0.05 to 0 0.5. Now you can see the viewport instantly updated to show the larger metaballs. I can tell there's not enough metaballs here because there's a lot of space between them. So to change that, I want to close the render tab and open the emissions tab. And where it says number 1000, and that's the number of metaballs being emitted, I want to change that to 3000. Now if I hit play, okay, that's a little better. Now if we play through this, you'll see that at the end of the timeline, the particle system stops at 200, and then it starts again at one. So I wanna change that because I want it to appear to be looping so I can see it as I work. So to do that, I'm gonna go to emissions again. So where it says frame start, which is when the particles begin to be emitted, I'm gonna click in that and change one to minus 50. So I want to continue past 250, which is where our timeline ends. So I'm going to click into end and change that to 300. Now if I let my timeline play, you can see that eventually when we get to the end, it just looks like it loops when it starts again at zero. So we're going to have a hard time getting a good idea of what our flame looks like because the metaballs, as you see, are very chunky. So I'm going to change the resolution of those by clicking on Fire. Then under the Properties menu, you can see I have a Metaball Properties. Click on that. Now this setting will affect Fire.001, so you don't have to change it in both locations, just change one of them. So under Metaball, we have Resolution Viewport and Render. And these set the Metaball resolution in the viewport and when you render them. So I'm going to change both of these to 0.1. Now the lower this number is, the more resolution there is, so it will affect your system's performance. So just keep that in mind. If you try playing the animation in your viewport and it's really sluggish, this is probably why. So you may want to set a higher number for your viewport resolution and then a lower number for your final render. But I'm going to leave both of mine at 0.1. So I'm going to reselect the emitter and then open the particle properties again. Now currently the particles are flowing down and I want them flowing up. So I'm going to close the Emissions tab, and I'm going to go to Field Weights. Under Field Weights, Gravity is currently 1. I'm going to click in there and change it to minus 1. Then if I hit Play, you can see it update in the viewport. Now the next problem is our particles are lasting too long. That's why they're flowing outside of the viewport. So I want to shorten their lifespan, which is how long a particle lasts from the time it's emitted to the time it ends. So if I close Field Weights and open Emission again, we can see the lifetime is set to 50. So I'm going to change 50 to 18. Now I know I'm going to change this a couple of more times, but I'm going to leave it that way, even though I know what my final number is going to be, because I want you to be able to see that as you make other changes, previous changes are affected. So we'll have to adjust this a couple of times to get it right. For right now, we'll put it at 18. So that's much shorter, which is what we want. So I'm going to pause that. Now you can see that the balls being emitted are coming out from the sides, and I don't want that. I want them just out of the top. So there's a couple ways to do this, and in this instance, I'm going to change the size of the emitter. So with the emitter selected, and my transform menu still open, and if it's not, you just hit N to open it, I'm going to change the dimensions of the X and the Y to 0.3. Now if I hit play, that's looking better. It's more condensed over the main metaball. Now you can see the metaballs being emitted are the same size at the bottom as they are at the top. But I actually want that to taper towards the end. So there's not a quick setting to change that, but we can adjust it with a texture. So we'll close the Emissions tab and open Textures. And you can see we don't currently have a texture, so I'm going to click New. And I'll click in the name and change that to Fire Size. And next to the name we see a Properties button, so I'm going to click on that. 
And at the top under type, we're going to change that from image or movie to blend to give us a gradient. So in the influence menu, we can see the gradient is driving general time because you can see it checked next to it. But that's not what we want. So let's uncheck that and we're going to check size. I'm going to close influence and under mapping, I want to change coordinates from generated to strand slash particle. You see in the viewport that now our particles are smaller at the bottom and larger at the top. So it's working, it's just the reverse of what we want. So I'll close mapping and open colors. And at the bottom of colors, I want to check color ramp and then open that drop down. So this is how we control our gradient. So we need to reverse this. So I want to click on the black swatch and drag it to the right. Then I'll click on the white swatch and drag it to the left and then finish dragging the black all the way to the right. So now our particles are sized the way we want them to. They'll be large at the bottom and smaller at the top. I know from experience, I want the balls to stay a larger size for a short period of time and then taper off. To change that, I'm gonna go back to the color ramp, select the white swatch, and where it says position, I'm gonna change that from zero to 0.2. They'll be just a little larger for a shorter period of time before they start decreasing in size, which is what I want. So now if I hit play, you can kind of see it's working, but the problem now is those settings have affected our lifetime. I want to pause this. I want to go back to the particle systems properties, close textures, and under emission, I want to change lifetime from 18 to 28. I want to hit play again. Okay, that's looking a little better. You'll notice while we're playing this that the main meta ball is very static and not moving at all which isn't very natural. So to fix that, I'm going to close emissions and open render again under particle settings. And I'll change the scale of the object from 0.5 to 1.25. So what this is going to do is when the meta balls are emitted, they're going to come outside of that main meta ball just a little bit, and it'll create this sense of movement. Since the meta balls are interacting with each other, it'll look like one cohesive flame at the bottom. Also, while I'm here, I'm going to change the scale randomness from 0 to 0.5. That way the metaball sizes are a little random when they come out. So if I hit play again, now you can see the bottom is really moving around like it should. It's not static anymore. This is closer to what we're looking for. However, you can see at the top as the metaballs are being emitted, they're not clumping together like I want. They look like individual metaballs. So to fix that, I'm going to click on the fire object and click on metaball properties. Now under metaball, you can see a setting labeled influence threshold. This is the setting that determines how the metaballs interact with each other based on that area of influence. So I'm going to change it from 0.6 to 4. So I'm going to really crank it up. Now if I hit play, you can see that's clumping together much more now, which is what I want. Now this is getting close, but one issue with it is the meta ball at the bottom is about the same width as the flame at the top, and we really want the flame to be more narrow at the top. So I could try shrinking my emitter down even more, but I'm going to show you a different method. So if we click on emitter and then particle properties, if we open the velocity tab, we can see that velocity normal is set to 1. So my understanding of what velocity controls is the amount of force the particles are being emitted. So the higher the force, the more the particles are being thrown out. So if I decrease that force, the particles aren't being thrown out as hard. So they stay more kind of clumped together. And I'll show you by changing 1 to 0.5. Now if I hit play, they're closer to the center where the emitter is rather than shooting out to the right and the left. Now this is looking good, but there is one more change I want to make. The particles are moving too fast. You can see the flames whipping around a lot more than I want it to. So to change this, I'm going to open the Physics tab. Under Forces, I'm going to change Drag from 0 to 1. So this slows down how fast the meta balls are coming out. I almost think of it as it's making the air thicker. So they're having to have more force to go up. So this slows them down quite a bit. You can see that's looking better now. The last change I want to make is I want the fire to be a little taller. So I want to go back to emissions and change lifetime from 28 to 35. 
So this is what the final flame is going to look like. Hopefully you found this helpful, especially as an introduction to the particle system and metaballs and how they affect and interact with each other.